remains humble. Coach Walsh, without you, I'm not standing on this stage today. He's lifted the Lombardi. He's earned the gold jacket. And now he's laser focused on a championship for the faithful. Here's 49ers GM and Hall of Famer John Lynch with Murphy Marcus on KNBR, the sports leader. All right, it's time for our Friday hit with John Lynch, which is always sponsored by Fieldwork Brewing Company. With eight locations around Northern California, fresh beer is always right around the corner. And guess who's right around the corner? It's 49ers GM John Lynch. John, a little bit of a curveball today. Brian Murphy is on vacation, so we're subbing in the kid, Carrie Crowley. John, thanks for joining us on Friday morning how you doing today what's going on marcus carrie how you guys doing we're doing good john kind of getting over last week's loss against the minnesota vikings getting ready for this weekend's matchup against the la rams but let's start out in minnesota not the result you wanted 23 to 17 loss but i feel like there are some key takeaways especially with the performance of someone like fred warner oh fred fred's outstanding i mean he's he's such a uh, a model uh for everybody in our organization i think for anyone if you want to watch someone work with intent each and every day with ex- extremely just a- exceptional attitude and effort and consistency his consistency of work uh yesterday you know, we were doing some work with our younger scouts and we were looking at the top five linebackers in this year's next year's draft class. And we went back and we watched Fred Warner at BYU. And it was a really cool exercise to see a guy that, you know, played in the nickel position. And I can tell you, you didn't see a guy that, man, this guy's going to be the best linebacker in football. I'd be lying to you if I ever told you that. But when you have a special amount of ability, um, aptitude, and then you're willing to put in the work, uh, and and not just not just match other people's intensity and consistency in in their work, um, but in your preparation, outwork your competition on a consistent basis. This is what can happen in year seven. You're getting better, and he kept us in that game, quite frankly, last week, and gave us an opportunity. Made it a one score game, and he was all over I, our analytics department. Um, you know, they, they'll throw little nuggets and it said, you know, something since 2020, Fred's the only linebacker to record a game with at least a sack, a pass breakup, an interception, a tackle for loss, a forced fumble, and to not miss a tackle in a single game. And so, um, but that's what he does every day out here on the practice field. You see the the punches on the football. He got one out that, that you know, um, um, Aaron Jones at the near the goal line huge swing in the game. He got another one on the sideline with Sam Darnold, but I watch him do it every day in practice here and he becomes a master of it. So I'm talking on and on because I can go on and on on that guy because he's, he's a remarkable football player. And uh, thank God we have him. Yeah, without a question, John, we could do the entire interview today just on Fred Warner, but there are other important issues that we need to address. Probably the other takeaway from that game is the injury list that we're looking at. We know about Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel not being available this weekend, but we also got the news yesterday that George Kittle and Charvarius Ward have been held out of practice yesterday. I mean, John, break this down from the 49er perspective, but also what the L.A. Rams are dealing with with all the injuries this early in the season. Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing. It's not ideal for us. Um, I think they've probably been hurt worse. Um, you know, they it's it's their skill position with Puka and Cooper, and then it's their offensive line as well. Um, John Johnson on the, on the defensive side. So they've got a lot of in, injuries. Uh, we've got a lot of injuries to key players. Um, but that's this league, and uh, who, who deals with that? No, nobody's going to feel sorry. You can't use it as an excuse. We have plenty of weapons. We have a very deep football team. We expect guys to step up when their number's called. Uh, I think J.P. Mason's been a, a tremendous illustration of that. Are you ready when your number's called? Because if so, you can you can really uh, make a name for yourself and make a career for yourself. And, and we're going to have, uh, you know, we've got ample ability, talent out there. And, and uh, that's our charge this week, find a way. And, and I expect that we will. John, always fun talking ball with you, and I think it's really exciting for 49ers fans this week to know that Talanoa Hafanga is making his return to the secondary. He transforms you guys in so many ways at the back end. What's the single element that you think is most important to Hafanga's presence when he returns to you this weekend? Oh, man. Um, well, I'd start, Kerry, with 
it's probably something fans don't recognize as much as as we do and players and coaches do. He's a tremendous communicator, mm-hmm. kind of a quarterback of the back end of that defense. Uh, sees a lot. Um, really prides himself on his preparation a very instinctive player but he's a really really good communicator which is important at the safety position so i'd start there and then then the fun starts i mean once the play starts i i I just think he's a really inspiring player the way he plays uh we talk a lot about being so prepared that you don't play with any hesitation and i think everybody sees that with huff's game uh, he, he's at his best when he's playing with no hesitation. And uh, that type of effort, that type of speed with which he plays, physicality, um, that's contagious to us. So he, he, he gives us a lift. Um, you know, we're, we're really excited. I, I'm proud of our staff and proud of Huff more than anything. The work that goes into an ACL recovery, it's, it's very intensive. It's, it can be lonely. It can, you go through low points. But Huff had a great attitude throughout. And I think um, they've done a nice job of really having him ready and primed. And we'll still have a snap count on him. I don't know what that will be. Um, but, but we'll be mindful of that. We've got other guys who can play really well. But Huff, Huff is ready for the opportunity. I'm just really excited and proud of him for the effort he's put forth in his rehab. And it, it will be a big pickup for, uh, for, for our defense. He's, he's a really good player. We get better with him on the field. Yeah, I know a lot of 49er fans are excited to see Huff back on the field for the first time since 2022, but it actually surprised me yesterday Yesterday, seeing Tono Hufunga speak to the media and talk about that 2022 All-Pro season, which he called mediocre, John, which is surprising, but it tells me that he is still developing his game. So how much do you think Tono Hufunga can still improve at this point in his career? Yeah, he, 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 that's what you love to hear is, uh, and it's not just lip service, that's how uh, Huff uh, really thinks i talk to him a lot and uh, he always wants to be better um and uh, if you have that attitude with his ability and his makeup you 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 constantly will get better like fred warner and and so i think uh, huff's got the right mindset and i'm, I'm just excited to, to go watch him play and and uh, i know i know our fans are he's a fan favorite because of the passion and and all the things that i talked about with the way he plays John, one of the things that I've always found so cool about your tenure with Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco with this 49ers franchise is you guys have hit on some late round gems and some undrafted free agents. And from the first two weeks of this season, Jordan Mason's been one of the breakout stars in the NFL. Very tall task in filling in for Christian McCaffrey right now. Give us some of the backstory. How did you guys circle around to Jordan Mason? How has he developed inside the building for you guys and gotten to the point where you can really trust him 20, 25 times a game? Yeah, well, JP's always been a trusted and dependable player here. Um, he just happened to be behind some really good players, you know, with Elijah and Christian. And, um, you know, that's kind of what happened to him at Georgia Tech. He was having a really nice career. And then a guy named Jameer Gibbs, who's now on the Detroit Lions, uh, came in there and uh, later transferred over to Alabama. But he kind of played a backup to, to Gibbs um, that senior year. Uh, probably was um, beneficial to us. Um you know, I think one thing when we, you know, our commitment to the run, our style of run game, you know, Kyle and his dad and Bobby Turner and our scouts over the years, we have a really good idea of what we're looking for at that position. And JP um, really fit that mold now. Um, and uh, we were we recruited him hard to get him in our building. And, um, you know, I won't say it was right away, but I remember You know, Kyle and I out on the field, I remember the part of the field, I'm looking at it right now when we kind of looked at each other and said, we we can't mess around and try to slip this guy through the practice squad. He's got to make our 53. We decided to keep four that year, and I'm glad we did. And, uh, you know, that depth, that development of young players is so critical uh, because, you know, we, we have a... We've got a good track record of paying our guys and having a lot of guys that deserve to be paid. But you also need the development of young players such that in an opportunity like this, when you have a couple guys nicked, um, do you have guys in the pipeline? And JP is a great illustration. For years, he's been very dependable on special teams for us, kind of a a go-to guy there. And he finished a lot of games for us, which showed our trust that we'd put him in. I think it was last year in Seattle at the end of that game. He's getting, you know, important carries because we trust him to protect the football. And uh, he 
whenever he's gone out there, the best thing I can say about him, he's been dependable, but he's also been productive, and now you're just seeing it in larger doses. And I think a big part in his development, I'll go back to something I think we talked about last week, the, the work he put in working out with Fred this offseason, it got him to a higher level in terms of uh, his physical, um, you know, capacity and fitness but probably more than anything his mental capacity and and mental toughness that he um, that, that he gained through an experience like that so I'm really proud of JP we all are and uh, he's been a, a really good player for us for a long time but in particular in these last couple of weeks yeah John and I wanted to follow up on JP's workload that he's had so far this season he's tied for the most carries in the NFL right now with Josh Jacobs actually has more carries in the first two games of the season than he's had in either of the past two seasons with you guys. So moving forward, without Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel in the backfield, how confident are you with him carrying that workload and also the confidence with the depth in the backfield with guys like Isaac Garendo and Patrick Taylor Jr.? Um, feel good about our depth. Um, you know, uh, Garendo's a rookie, but a guy who's, who's earning our trust each day. Um, it's hard. A lot of people wanted to evaluate him off one carry last week, and I, I don't think that's really fair. Isaac's going to do well for us. Uh, he's got crazy ability. He can really, really run. He's strong. Uh, a lot, lot of things that we like, and um, you know he'll get more opportunities. Patrick's a proven guy in this league who's played in this scheme before, so we're good in terms of our depth, and and uh, we've got to be mindful of JP's reps, but. We run the football. We're committed to running the football. And, uh, you know, we'll do what it takes to win. John, it's abundantly clear that, you know, it's really difficult to sustain success long term in the NFL without hitting on draft picks. And I think you guys have clearly worked in a number of these early draft picks from the 2024 class. And I want to get your thoughts on the progress. We've seen some Renardo Green. Dominic Pooney obviously taking over a starting job on that offensive line. Malik Mustafa filling in at safety a little bit. Where do you think this 2024 rookie class is right now entering week three compared to some of your other recent draft classes? Is it kind of ahead of the curve right now? I don't want to get into, um, you know, comparing, but I, I do know we all feel really, really good about this class. Um, you know, our top guy, obviously everybody's, it's been well chronicled what's happened with Ricky Pearsall, but uh, Ricky's trending well. He's, he's rehabbing well. Uh, he's eager to get out there. We'll put him out there at the right time. Um, still has a couple more games to wait, but Ricky's doing real well. Renardo, um, he's everything we thought he'd be. He's still learning. That's a tough position to go in and play, but we're really proud of Renardo. Uh, Pooney has been tremendous. Mustafa's getting reps. Um, you know, it's a, it's a group we really, Jacob Cowing, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy who may get some ops this week uh, in the offensive side. We've seen him as a punt returner. Um, so this group is a group we really like. I think uh, their makeup, their wit is, uh, is, is kind of what we hang our hat on. And, and um, uh, I think this is going to be a really strong draft class for our team for years to come, not just now, Garendo, we talked about. So um, it's, it's a class we're excited about. And uh, they're made of the right stuff, and now they just got to go show it on the field and continue to do it. And that's this league; you got to you got to do it over and over. And uh, but I think these guys are cut. Um, are, we did a good job. I think our scouts. I give them a lot of credit. Our coaches of identifying the right, not only talent, but probably more importantly, um, uh, the makeup of these guys. And uh, it's a group I think we're all going to be proud of for years to come. John, moving on from the rookies to the veterans on the team. This weekend, without Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey, how much are you relying on the veterans like Brandon Ayuk and Jawan Jennings to step up this weekend? We always rely on those guys. Um, you know, I think maybe they get a little more opportunities, um, but those guys are always ready, and uh, those are two of our two of our go-to players and guys that uh, you know are part of our culture and who we are, and so. Um, you know, I think they're always ready. Um, they'll be ready this week. Um, it's always just fun when you start playing uh, games in general. But when you play divisional games against a team like the Rams, a team we have great respect, we saw how much they improved last year. It's always going to be a challenge. They're down some guys. We're down some guys. Um, but this is the NFL. Like, go, who can who can produce it? You can't make excuses. You got to show up. You got to play. You got to find a way. And that's what both teams are trying to do. I know we'll have a great presence with our fans down at SoFi. Um, 
you know, that's always a fun sight, and uh, we got to make the most of this opportunity. Absolutely. A lot of fans traveling down to Southern California. Folks, hitting up SFO right now, headed down for the weekend, John. And I, I know it's a 365-day-a-year grind, and I know that especially during the season, you and Kyle are in constant communication about different things you have to do for the roster, who's going to be ready to go on Sunday. One of the things that's always fascinated me about your job what does a Saturday look like? Do you watch a lot of college football? Do you talk with your scouts? Do you sit back, have a field work brew? Like, what does Saturday look like in your profession? That's different. It's different whether you're at home or on the road. Last week, I can tell you I was at TCU. Um, my daughter is at one of our daughters. One of our four children is a senior at TCU. So um, when you can mix family with what we do, um, it's always a good weekend. So it was parents weekend, her last parents weekend, but TCU has a lot of talent, UCF. So I didn't stay for that game, but you were able to get there, talk to their coaches and experience, you know, something I'll never forget with, with uh, our daughter. So uh, that's what a Saturday on a given Saturday can look. It's also the day where we have to, um, you know, do our final transaction. So if you're flexing guys up from the practice squad, you have to do that on Saturday. So it's an important day on time that in terms of like, what's your final roster uh, for game day? Um, you can do your inactives on, on the actual game day, but anything transactionally has to be done by by Saturday at one. So uh, always an important day. It's walk through for the players, kind of one last dress rehearsal. And then this week, um, you know, for instance, last, last, uh, last week, go in two time zones. We traveled on a Friday. This week, since it's a shorter trip, we'll travel as a team on Saturday. So um, that's what a Saturday is all about. And, uh, you know, it's always just the, the calm before the storm. And uh, I love getting in those meetings the night before I sit in in the, uh, you know, in the offensive where Kyle installs their first 20, 24 plays. And, and uh, that gets you a good feel for the game. Then I sit in the team, spend some time in the special teams. I mean, it's good just to get a feel for, you know, what uh, what's going to be critical for the for the game, for our success. And um, that's that's basically what a Saturday looks like. Yeah, and you mentioned making those roster moves on a Saturday. I'm just curious. I was trying to look up some information earlier today. Have you guys made an official roster move to replace Christian McCaffrey after placing him on the IR? No, we've kept it. We've had we've kind of been at 52 players, and you know the practice squad and the flexes kind of allow you to do that. What you don't want to do is get in a deal where you're, you know, you're you're you know if you need to, it's always smart to, but you don't want to. You know, for instance, hopefully Ricky Pearsall and some other guys are coming off. Um, you know, the, the short-term IR or different lists. And so you don't want to have to expose people by then having to, to you know, cut players. So the, the flexes give you an opportunity to, to field the roster you want to. So there's always thought that goes into these things. So, But the answer to that is no, we haven't. All right, John. And then last thing before we let you go, we've committed the radio sin. We haven't asked you about Brock Purdy yet. <laughs> we'll love to get your breakdown of his performance last week against Brian Flores. And the narrative out there about whether or not he can get the job done this weekend without guys like Christian McCaffrey, Debo, and possibly George Kittle. Well, all I know about Brock is since he's been here, all he's done is is prove himself right and a lot of a lot of doubters wrong. And uh, we're sure happy that we have him. Got a lot of trust and belief in Brock. Uh, I thought Brock competed his tail off last week, and you know, under tough circumstances, and. Um, you know, would he like some back? I'm sure he would. And uh, but you know, Brock has been a really, really uh, special player for us, and and will continue to be. He's ready for the challenge at hand. Uh, Brock's a, a leader on this team. Um, he's a guy who kind of sets the tone for us, and he has this week in practice. And so, I'm never worried about Brock Purdy. I always have a ton of belief in Brock Purdy and what he's going to do for our team. And um, The same can be said for this week. I think Brock will play outstanding, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, looking forward to the game this weekend, John. We always appreciate your time and insight. Hopefully we're celebrating a win on Sunday with a filled work beer, and we'll talk to you next Friday with the return of Murph. That sounds good. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, John. Good luck this weekend. 